Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> All right, so we are back. This is going to be part one of two. Uh, we've got a 300 FM that uh, came in, and according to the note that we got from the customer, um, he's wanting to make some upgrades and get the uh, input SWR down. Um, I think I already know why the input SWR is high, but... Uh, We'll go through and uh, challenge that as we go through and uh, make the necessary changes over on this. But uh, anyhow, so I already ha have it hooked up and I'll get you guys some numbers and stuff and show you what it's doing uh, before and then we'll look at it afterwards. So um, I know we're going to have to retune this just a little bit. Um, mainly because of the fact that we're not really getting the output power that we should. But this has original MRF 421 Motorola transistors. Now the customer actually sent me a set of HG 421s. So he's wanting to swap those out, kind of see how this thing's going to work. At least I'm pretty sure that's what uh, he said they sent. Double check your little package. And yes, MRF 421s. Looks like they've got a rating on them of 67. So we're actually going to take these and uh, drop these in place of the original, pull those out, check the, S uh, check the SWs, check the uh, rating on them. And then uh, I'll mark them and send them back to the customer. So I already know it's working, which is a good thing. Because that means that uh, there's less to fight with. So set this back off to the side so we can save that for later on. But um, let's do some numbers. Uh, part, of, part of what I think is causing some of the uh, SWRs is, number one, we've got a... Um, I, believe it is a 10 ohm resistor here in line uh, coming from the relay on the input so you know we're gonna probably replace that and do away with it and then we've got a lot of inductance here where it's actually going in through this wire uh, depending on whether it's in high or low going through a resistor and a switch and then going back through and then back into the uh, 10 ohm resistor. So um, we're going to probably replace all this with a piece of coax and see if we can't uh, make that a little more efficient as far as for the high-low and uh, do the high-low just a little different on this. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that here um, a little bit later on as we go through the circuit itself. Um, when the customer got this in from... Uh, eBay, I think he said that this was already bypassed when he got it. So there was a piece of tape on there. I wanted to see what was underneath there. So pulled that off, seen that. But uh, we're going to replace the original wires, which looks like, I think, uh, size 14. So we'll replace this 14 gauge. And uh, I don't know if we're going to go with 10 or if we're going to go with 8. A lot of it just depends on how we can get things uh, manipulated into the uh, cabinet here so uh, we'll see how that goes when we get uh, a little bit closer but anyways let's get some numbers kind of take a look at it and go from there uh, the preamp does seem to be working which is great because the relays are proprietary and I haven't been able to find replacement relays for this old girl for 15 plus years so I'd give up yeah, anytime one of these come in, if it's the relay, um, if I can't spray it out and make it function, yeah, it's probably not going to work when it leaves. But uh, anyhow, let's take a look at it. Oops. Let's tighten that up a little bit here. All right. So let's take some numbers here, and then we'll take a look at the uh, input, and the input's what's I think really causing us some issues. So 
right now on high I've got this set for 50 watt dead key. So we've got a 1000 watt slug in 1x position for peak, a 500 in RMS, and a 5 watt slug going back to the 5000 watt bird dummy load. Alright, so, hello, audio, audio, about 320, audio, audio, and about 200 bird on high, on low, about 25 watt dead key, hello, about 280, audio, audio, and about uh, 170 on the RMS. So, not too terribly bad. Let's go back up on high. Take a look at the uh, input here. Hello, 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 audio. So we got about two and a half watt reflect on high, low, audio, audio, about three and a half. So, yep, we'll see what we can't do to get that down and get that uh, a little bit more manageable. So we'll have to figure out, uh, you know, what they've got on the input uh, as far as on the uh, capacitance. Um, kind of go from there. I'll probably have to try to find a uh, old schematic on this uh, to make my life a little bit easier. You know, there's only a couple of input and a couple of uh, capacitors, which I believe this one right here. It's kind of hid. Uh, that should be the input tune. We'll take a look at that and see what we've got going on there and uh, start moving forward. Uh, output, um, I'll find out. Because I know it comes across here on this main rail here, goes back to the relay. Um, more than likely our output uh, capacitor is back here. So I'll try to get a lead on that and see what the uh, uh, output tune is on this setup. But uh, anyways, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll start taking this apart and see what we get into. All right, guys, we'll catch you here in a little bit. We'll come back and try to finish up the uh, video for this. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are back again. All right, so I've been working on this for several hours today, but uh, I think we got it finally finished up. So we went ahead and pulled out the original MRF 421s. Uh, these are the blue dot. Um, which I can't remember, you'd have to go back into the uh, Motorola handbook uh, to look up the uh, date code based off of the uh, uh, blue dot, red dot, and there's a couple other different ones. Um, I went ahead and checked these real quick before we got uh, too involved after I pulled them out and um, took a pencil and just wrote on the bottom of them the HFE. So this one I've got an HFE of 10. Uh, this one I have an HFE of 8. So, uh, you know, definitely seen some uh, wear time on them. But now the, the beautiful thing about the uh, Motorola's like this is, you know, I've seen them where they've had 8 and 10, put them in a uh, two-pill amplifier and get another four or five years out of them. So, um, you know, one of the few that uh, you can actually run that far down and still, you know, still make some power out of them. Um, but I've also seen them go, you know, belly up, um, you know, a few months after. So it's still, a, still a crapshoot, you know, it just depends on how hard they get hit. But anyways, we're still working on the, uh, 300 FM and this is, you know, quite an unusual amplifier as a whole. Get the uh, camera in here a little bit. All right. So... We went ahead and pulled the uh, originals out. We put the uh, HG version of the 421s in there. Now, I had to make some altercation or alterations to this. Uh, part of it to get it to tune out a little bit better and to get things to lay down. Um, one of which I went ahead and I replaced you know, these two pieces of wire that are on the uh, input side. Run all this, runs all the way up here to the front. 
Uh, I went ahead and replaced these two wires with a piece of uh, RG316 coax, which is this blue looking wire here. So I went ahead and replaced that. I also removed the uh, 10 ohm resistor that they had for buffer going into it. Um, now that way we get just a little bit more out of it on the high power. So, you know, got that taken out. Uh, we changed a lot of capacitors in this. Um, now several of these are like 110 puff, uh, where they had four of them grouped together, two on one side and two on the other for the collector to ground. So I went ahead and I, I replaced all those with just a single on each side and, uh, done away with that. Now we had two large capacitors that are 400 puff each. Um, well actually they're 411 and you know they still check good. But I went ahead and pulled those out, replaced those with a metal clad. Get this tilted up here a little bit. So you're gonna see we replaced the uh, metal clad here and then where they had two here and two here, um, or yeah, two here and two here, uh, we replaced those with singles. And uh, I actually bumped these up just a little bit more on the capacitance. So this thing, the way it's designed and built, um, most all the tuning is done for the output on the output transformer. So I went ahead and left, uh, left this tuner, had to change out this capacitor here and move it up. Um, about 120 about 120 puff extra so we added 120 here and then almost another 180 puff here uh, by the time we went ahead and moved up to a metal clad uh, in order to go ahead and you know give myself a little bit of uh, room to tune so this way I could tweak this a little bit and get it uh, you know get it fine tuned in so got that taken care of uh, I had to replace the input capacitor here. I had to bring that down just a tiny bit. Not much, but just a little bit. So I brought it down. And eh, it still wasn't acting quite the way I wanted it to. So I went ahead and installed a couple of feedbacks, which it didn't have to start with. So I made a couple of feedback uh, circuits here, put those in on both sides, and seemed to take care of a lot of the a um, little glitchiness that I was seeing with this when we started to tune it. I also went ahead and replaced the input capacitor, which was this little 68 puff uh, disc capacitor. That's been replaced now with uh, a set of micas. So that's in there as well. So we went ahead and um, I had to actually add two of them in there in order to go ahead and get it just right and get it to its lowest uh, input setting that we could get it at because uh, I, I didn't have one that was the exact amount. Uh, I needed 10 puff more than what uh, uh, the closest value was. So went ahead and installed that, got that taken care of. So the input looks good now. Um, high low works really well. You know, granted low power, you're gonna have a little bit of, a little bit more SWR, but not much uh, as far as on the input, but you know, it has to do with running through the uh, original resistor up here. But anyhow, let's get you some numbers and show you what this thing turned out like. So, I know everybody, everybody likes to see the numbers here, so we'll try to play the numbers game. Let's see if I can't get that glare off of the screen here before we get started. I'm not sure if I can or not. There we go. So we'll have to do a little, little off-axis view. That way we can get the uh, light from the window out of there. All right, so let me power this thing up. Okay, so we're gonna start out on shutting this off and I'm going to show you what my dead key going into this is. Okay, so I'm just under a watt. Let's bump that up to a one watt carrier. That's going to be close enough. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this back on. 
put this on high. All right, so we've got our five watt slug in reverse going back to the 5,000 watt bird dummy load, 1,000 watts in peak and 500 in average. So we're gonna be looking at the bottom scale here and the middle scale here. So dead king about 50 watts. We're gonna start out on the average. Hello, audio, audio, audio. So about 250 on the average on the PEP. Hello, 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 audio, audio, eh, about 380, so not too shabby, you know, uh, output reflect, hello, 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 audio, about a quarter watt. All right, so let's go over here and we'll take a quick look at the uh, input, as you've seen in the first part of this video, hello, 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 audio. So about a quarter watt reflect on the input that is on high. We're going to go down to low. Hello, audio. Audio. So you can see we get about a half watt reflect. So that's more than acceptable. So uh, another thing that I forgot about. We'll go back over here real quick. Since we've got this on low. Originally we were dead key in 50. Now we're dead key in about... Uh, uh, roughly about 20. Hello, audio. So just a hair over 200 RMS. Audio, audio. And about uh, 375, 370. So pretty good overall. Hello, radio, radio. Check, 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 check. Audio. All righty. So... I think, Mr. C, I think we've got you, or Mr. K, I'm sorry, where is the C? Yeah, Mr. C. <laughs> so anyways, we got you all taken care of on this big guy. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, it was definitely an interesting build. Uh, I haven't played with the uh, MRF 421s yet. Um, so I've spent uh, several hours, like I said, on this, going through it. Uh, we went ahead and replaced your uh, main cable here. It's not quite as heavy as I'd like to be, um, but the 10 gauge wire that I have is uh, is quite substantial compared to uh, some of the other. If you see over here in the junk pile, yeah, there we go. Um, you know, this was what the original original wire looked like. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's almost double, almost double the original, um, believe it or not. So quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of difference between what was in there, uh, versus what's in there. This is a really good, uh, silicon wire that we've got this put in with. So like I said, I think you're going to be in pretty good shape with it. Like I said, I'd like to win up one more stage size if I could have, but, um, given where you know where i could attach all my uh, main cabling and what have you um i was really kind of concerned about trying to fit uh anything larger in there but uh we're still able to pull plenty of power as far as that goes we're still doing good numbers and i don't think you're going to have any issues with that so all righty well guys hopefully you enjoy the quick little video here on the uh, 300 fm um this is also fully biased, so I don't think it's got a delay in it, but um, it is a biased amplifier. So, uh, you know, like I said, definitely, you know, definitely been an interesting little uh, project that we've taken on here. But again, hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, enjoyed looking at everything. Uh, like I said, if you would, please hit your like and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. We'd love to have you in here on the uh, family and we will see you on our next live video or uh, on the next video itself. All right, guys, catch you later. Have a great day.